Uh, Oha would have hearings uh, about halava uh, done on Moloka'i. So I don't know how you do that. It's uh, how you keep us out of it. But uh, uh, we, like I said, we tried to play by the rules. Uh, that, that didn't work. So then we started uh, doing uh, spiritual and uh, cultural access into the valley, practicing our religious rites. Um, there are many people who came along the way because that was the time of the uh, second renaissance back in 92 and uh, for the island of Oahu it was kind of like uh, where, where young Hawaiians from the UH and people who were going back on the island started coming uh, to Halava and uh, 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 when they went into Halava, they just kind of realized, you know, that it was a special place and there was a lot of sacred sites that needed to be saved. So we were gaining, you know, momentum among the, among the Maka'inana and then uh, the, the cultural people. Um, I thought, the, or we thought that one of the main important things was to preserve what was left of the valley. Because every time they came in and, and they uh, marked it for, uh, uh, what do they call that, uh, site preservation? What is the term? Uh, passive, passive, passive preservation where they come in and they, uh, 
uh, GPS it, or I don't know if they had GPS at the time, but they marked it down and then they just bowl it over and they would say, this is what this site was, an amphitheater, or, you know, there were petroglyphs that aren't there anymore. So every time something like that happens, it's like a page of our history being torn out and you're never going to get that back again. All you have is, you know, the mo'olelo of the people that were in there at, and they, that they seen that. And, you know, right now it's uh, 2011 and it's been a long road. Mm -hmm. And many of the people that joined us on that journey aren't here anymore. You know, at, at least a dozen of them uh, have passed on. So for us, it's a continuation of that legacy to finish what we started a long time ago, even though the H3 is finished and uh, the cars are running on. Sure, you know, people are, are going here and there from uh, Ko'olau side to the Ewa side, you know, much faster now. But, you know, at what price, have, at what price, you know, was it really worth it? I don't think so. Well, as it were, H3 got built and impacted by the building of that freeway, in fact, were all the sites that we are now referring to. So in different areas, some were impacted more than others. Um, the areas that we were mostly concerned with within the corridor, of course, were Ha'iku Valley, Luluku, and Halava Valley. Um, for Wally and I, in particular, Luluku is important. Um, we've always had aloha for that area. And as it usually is, um, the attraction or the draw, this feeling that you have, you don't know why you're there, usually reveals itself later on. Um, I didn't know until Wally told me that the person who is the um, patriarchal holder of this particular kuleana um, also had land over there in Kaneohe, in, um, in that area. So as a result of the, the, the highway going through, there was a mitigation process that began that involved um, people who um, came from the areas of impact, came from different organizations who had concerns yeah, for the area, cultural organizations, um, institutions of education, and all getting together to sort of establish a working group. And um, I think that that process was very, uh, probably was well intended. And for me, I think um, that the process probably had different objectives and aims um, from HLID and then from the working group itself. I remember clearly attending in the beginning and one of the first things the working group needed to address was what would be the protocol? How would we give our mana'o? What would be um, accepted in terms of general house rules, how we treat each other, that kind of thing. But I think in the process for me, um, as I see it, um, the objectives in mind I think for HLID was a way to kind of include those who were associated with the project and to get mana'o, to see what kind of visioning, a plan for the land, for land use in the future, um, issues of concern, um, the history of these areas, and qualifying potential problems within these areas as might have been brought to the surface by the working group. I think for the working group, their objectives were to provide that mana'o, um, to provide a history um, of those areas that were impacted, to really be involved in the process, to, to, to really be involved. And by that, I mean to be able to provide mana'o what they envisioned, checks and balances in the process, um, and, and at the end, probably looking for direct involvement with any end project that would come out as a result of the mitigation. And... Um, I think the process uh, probably um, has been a very valuable lesson in learning how to deal with each other. And um, I hate to say that it was um, 
all in vain because everything that we do is a lesson in learning. However, I think one of the key factors that came out of the process was a constant sense of frustration in that process. And um, no real communication, I think, between um, the initial uh, people involved with HLID in terms of our visioning. We saw different things. We saw different ways in which to accomplish those different things. And they were not always culturally appropriate. Um, I have problems with the process in terms of having to attend three or four meetings in a row and having to reinstate and reapply um, the mana'o that we were giving and then not see it actually appear on the palapala on the paper and have to say, well, how come that's not on there? I thought we discussed this two or three meetings ago. So it, what it did was it, you had a sense of um, that somehow you're, you were just part of a process that was really done uh, for HLID and not really for the working group. Um, we had quite a few contentious discussions within the working group that probably would not have been so contentious had the communicative protocol been better. You know, if, if there was um, trust, you know, I think as Hawaiians we're so, we already come to things like this with a, a wall, a defense mechanism. So we're already, whoever's, whoever's facilitating is already, you gotta watch them.